All right, everyone, this is Mr. Lee. This is the last video um, in the FRQ series. Uh, there are three types, and it's the last one. This one is called the experimental design. Now, I, I'm going to create this video uh, with the idea that, yes, this year we haven't done like in-class labs, uh, but the, uh, the AP exam and the AP questions expect you to be able to create experiments even though you weren't necessarily in the classroom. Um, and this is just a skill set that we can practice on and that we will get some practice on, um, and these tips can definitely help you out. All right, so let's begin. Here are a couple of steps to solve the FRQs. All right, now these kind of sound very familiar, and that's because for every FRQ, the steps are basically the same. Step one, determine the variable that you're trying to solve for. So within the question itself, within the prompts, you will see uh, different variables being listed, either explicitly, like they will say, you know, X or F or V or A or whatever, or very implicitly, like they kind of like hint at it, and it's up to you to figure that out. Uh, find the equation that you can use to solve for that missing variable. Now, this is a very important skill, and there is no other FRQ where this skill is more necessary than this style of FRQ. You need, you need to be able to find the proper equation. Um, determine the equipment that you can use to find each missing variable within the equation. Now, I will have a, um, a slide that describes that. Uh, write out each step starting with a verb. This is just general how to write a uh, procedure. And number five, always, always, always end each procedure statement uh, with a uh, the following step. You need to always say repeat the steps above to determine the average value of X or V or F, right? So whatever variable you're looking for, you need to always say repeat the steps above to determine the average value. Okay, you have to say it because you are guaranteed one point for saying that statement. Always guaranteed one point. And these are worth 12 points. So getting one out of 12 right off the bat, that's a good deal. All right, next, uh, here's some tips, okay? I'm gonna go over each one, uh, and we're gonna keep these tips in mind as I go through different examples. So first tip, uh, write down uh, a clear and concise procedure that is easily followed, all right? Numbering the sequence helps. So instead of writing a paragraph for the procedures, step one, step two, step three, right? Make it nice and easy, um, and always start off each step with a verb. Okay. A verb helps uh, organize your thoughts and it tells the reader directly what you are doing. If a diagram is required, label each part of the diagram and each equipment. Now, you need to know that this is not AP Art Studio, right? They, they're not grading you on your artistic abilities, but rather they're trying to grade you on are you able to figure out which equipment is necessary? How do you set up that equipment for the lab itself? Okay, next one, identify the variables that you can measure uh, with each equipment. Now, this is a skill set, and uh, in the following slides, I do go over which equipment goes with which variable. And we have in the procedure, name the variable, okay, time instead of T. So you want to have the variable listed. So if you're measuring time, uh, say the word time instead of the variable T. Um, and do not confuse calculated values with measured values. So what this means is, if we take a look at my example, if the lab wants you to determine the velocity, okay, through, a, through an experiment, you have to uh, measure the position and the time, okay? So in order to find velocity, you have to get data for position, you have to get data for time. All right, and that way you can actually calculate velocity or you can actually measure the velocity. So there's a clear distinction based on what the problem wants. You're either using the, uh, the equation to find that with the different measure things or you're using a tool to find a single variable. All right, so there's a very clear distinction and it is always based on what the problem is asking for. Next, uh, clearly explain how you will analyze your data. So this is separate from the procedures. The, the procedures are just there for you to collect data. There will be a separate part to analyze your data. And in the data analysis, uh, how will the variables be graphed? 
okay? Because whenever we have data, we can always graph it. What information can be gathered from the slope of the line or the area under the curve? That's always important. Um, and that comes with knowing what equations you're using and um, is it division or is it multiplication for the variables that you're looking for? Uh, what is the physical meaning of the intercept? That is always important to know. All right, when I ask about uncertainty, this is very important. There's usually a point assigned for the uncertainty idea behind an experiment. So this is what you need to know. Every single measuring device has uncertainty. And this is due to the available precision of the uh, measuring instrument. Um, when asked to discuss uncertainties, explain how the measurement might affect the result of your experiment. So for example, uh, for the first bullet, every measuring device has an uncertainty. So if you look at a ruler, uh, in between each hash mark, right, there's a space. There's a space where there's no ink. That is your uncertainty. Okay, you are only as accurate as your device. Okay, uh, like for example, if you have a digital scale, right? If I get on a digital scale and it comes out that I am 165.24 pounds, okay, it's only accurate up to the 0.24. I could be 165.24789432105 pounds, Right, but because of the accuracy of the instrument, I'm only accurate up to a very certain amount. And if you remember back from chemistry, this is where sig figs come into play. And so with that in mind, you have to keep in mind, uh, how does this uncertainty affect the overall data? Remember, more and more uncertainties that build up, your overall data will have just this level of uncertainty. So there's, uh, like if you have instruments that are not very precise, for example, if you have a meter stick, that's just one meter long. Like you literally have a stick that's just one meter long, okay? Versus a meter stick with like individual hash marks, right? If you use the one that is more accurate, your data will become more accurate. Versus the meter stick, which is just one meter long, doesn't tell you anything else, then it's just a one meter, then your data is gonna have a lot of inaccuracies, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so here's a common equipment and the variable equivalent. So what I want you to do, because we will be practicing uh, these FRQs in class, take the time right now, pause the video, write this down, write the this table down somewhere so that you have it available to you. Now this is more important for us this year because this year we didn't, we didn't do in-person labs, okay? And so it might not come as naturally to you uh, to know which variable is measured with which equipment, okay? So write this down uh, and I'm gonna go over uh, each variable, all right? So for, to measure time, okay? we use a stopwatch or a timer. To measure distance slash position, we use a meter stick. Now, if it's a longer distance, sometimes you can get away with saying you use measuring tape, like the ones that really expand out. Uh, if you're measuring an angle, use a protractor. If you are determining the mass, you have to use a scale. Notice this is measuring mass and not weight. Okay, so be very specific with that. Uh, if you wanna measure velocity, slash speed, uh, there's this idea called a photogate or a speedometer or a motion detector. Okay, so all three of those tell you um, how to find the velocity slash speed. And uh, I will draw this out to, to explain how to set up that equipment a little bit uh, better, all right? Uh, and the last one is force. Now know that force and mass are often interchangeable because people often think mass is weight. Mass is not weight, okay, weight is a force, mass is just its own variable, right? Weight is mass times acceleration due to gravity. So you might think, well, I get on a scale to determine my weight. Yes, that is true. And that's because our bathroom scales, okay, um, have been pre-calculated to add in the acceleration due to gravity, all right? Um, so for force, you can use a force probe or a spring scale. And once again, I will illustrate that in order to uh, better help you out with how to write out the procedures. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to draw how to use uh, the different equipment for speed and force. All right. So for speed, uh, a photo gate. Oops. I have my galaxy pen up, don't want that. So for a photo gate, okay, and I'm just gonna use a cart, right? So this is like a car with wheels and it's on like a track. So what a photo gate does is, there's usually two photo gates, okay, but there could be one, but it's, um, imagine like a speed trap. So like there's like a little, uh, like a bridge, okay? And this car can go 
under it. So this is like a side view. So from a, a front view, it kind of looks like this, where there's a, a laser, okay, a laser right here, and it shines between. And so when the cart goes through that laser, it starts the timer. Um, and when the car leaves the gate, it ends the timer. So it's able to use the equation. Velocity is distance divided by the time. Okay, it figures out the time. It figures out, you know, uh, the distance that it took and what I is able to find you the velocity. So a really cool device. Okay, so um, if that's how a photo gate works. So this is a singular photo gate. Um, now when there's two photo gates, uh, the timer starts here. And then when the cart goes through here, the timer ends. Okay, so that's another version of the photo game. Um, another one, and I think this one makes a little bit more sense because like imagine like a speed gun that uh, you can use to determine how fast something is using. So like, for example, in baseball, right? When a pitcher throws a ball, they use a, a speed gun uh, to see how fast it's going. And so a um, this is a motion detector. Okay. The reason why I'm sketching this out is because within the FRQ, you are required to sketch out your your stuff. All right, so for a uh, motion detector, it's based off a of sonar, much like dolphins and bats. Okay, so um, the motion detector, uh, if they if the cart is here, let's say it's moving in this direction, because of the way the sonar works, as this cart is moving from one position to another, it's able to determine how fast it's going. All right, so uh, this is like scenario one. Uh, if you have a motion detector here, it will detect how fast that object is going. All right, but let's say we have we have a secondary object, right? And I'll do this in a different color slash size. Whoa, big, right? So there's a big cart. So that's a big cart. And if you have a motion detector here, okay, both of those motion detectors, right? This goes beep, 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 beep. So this is cart one and this is cart two. So uh, each motion detector is able to determine um, how fast each object is moving. And usually this setup right here is used for uh, collisions, aka the momentum unit, okay, where we have two objects that collide into each other. Okay, um, so we have that uh, motion detector, uh, a photo gate, and a speedometer. It's just another way of saying photo gate. Okay, so these are the main ones. Personally, uh, I find that uh, the writing how a motion detector works, this is the easiest. Okay, so, um, but I mean, it's, it's really up to you. Okay, and it really depends on the, the experiment itself. All right, uh, next, next up. Uh, oh, just so you know, uh, the reason why I made that sound and I drew these dotted lines is so that I can show you um, the, the axis of motion Okay, so what that means is that this cart has to be within this axis in order for this motion detector to pick up that speed. Okay, um, as for this one, the photo gate, the object just has to pass through, pass through um, the gate in order to determine the speed. All right, next we have the different force stuff. So a force probe, a force probe uh, is usually on like this black box and that box collects information and there's like a little hook. Okay, there's a little hook um, and you can attach this hook. So let's say we have like a, like a box there and we attach like a, this force probe, I'm going to call it FP for force probe. Right, we attach this force probe like so, and we can either, if we pull on it or if we push on it, um, this force probe detects the amount of uh, push slash pull. Okay, uh, and it sends it to like a computer and the computer is able to tell you what it is. So this is a lot like a spring scale. Okay, a spring scale is like a force probe, but a force probe is digital. A spring scale is what we call manual, where um, we have a spring scale like this, and there's like numbers on the side, and there's like a little plunger, they call it a plunger. Okay. A little bit of toilet stuff added into the physics course, right? So this plunger, it, uh, it goes up and down, and it's attached to like a spring. I might be drawing this incorrectly, but the uh, based on like the force, remember a force is a push or a pull, this plunger adjusts and these have different numbers, 
right? So this could be like one, this could be like two newtons, right? And this could be like three newtons. And based on how high or how low the plunger moves, that's how much force is applied to the object. So that's how a force probe works. Now, the, the last one that I want to uh, talk to you about, which is not in that list, is this idea called the accelerometer. Ooh. Now, this is really cool. So sometimes it's called a gyroscope. And this is a piece of technology that's actually inside your phones. So if you're like watching YouTube, right, and you're, and you're holding up your, I guess I'll do it this way. So you're holding up your phone upright and you tilt it to be landscape mode. And you're like, how does my phone know that it's sideways? Right? And that's because there's a gyroscope inside that detects. So it detects the, uh, the acceleration. Okay, so it detects the acceleration um, as it's going from vertical to horizontal. And if it's like, oh, I'm not horizontal, it'll adjust everything. So that's what an accelerometer does. And usually it's just like a device that you can put on an object and it, that device will detect how much acceleration an object has. So for example, if we had like a, I don't know, like a Hot Wheels roller coaster kind of thing, right? And here's the Hot Wheels cart. And we put your accelerometer, so like, in our example, uh, we put like, a cell phone on there, right? And don't say cell phone, just say accelerometer. Okay, on that cart, as this cart is moving down the hill, the accelerometer will be able to detect how much it's accelerating based on the gyroscope and the accelerometer. It's a really cool piece of technology. Uh, if we were in class, we would actually be using your cell phones in this kind of matter, right? Okay, so uh, we have that. And the last thing I wanna show you is how you can use the equations uh, to really uh, talk about the procedures. So um, I'm gonna use uh, the kinematics equations, okay, first. So we have xf is equal to xo plus v initial t plus one half a t squared. Okay, and let's say uh, the problem, the prompt says um, we have, let's just do it this way, right? So uh, we have a cart and this cart is going to be like launched up the hill, right? And you want to determine the acceleration, okay? You want to determine the acceleration of the cart of the cart okay design a experiment to determine the acceleration of the cart all right so we have we have everything that we need within this equation so the problem tells you i'm going to highlight this that we want to determine the acceleration okay that's what we want to find so what that means is you need to um be able to get data for the other variables, okay? And this is where all those word problems that we did really come into to help. So we know that usually our initial position is zero, right? And if it's, um, if it's going up the hill, right, we need to determine the initial velocity and the time. So what this comes down to is, are you able to determine with tools all but A? Okay. And so my procedure, you would have to write out a procedure that, that says, okay, measure XF using, and if you remember from the, the list, we said meter stick, okay, meter stick, boom, T, time. How do we determine time? We time how long the cart goes up the hill. Boom, time, time, right? We have, this is time, this is time. We have two of the times. And the last thing that we want to find is the initial velocity. Okay, so this is like, okay, how do you find the initial velocity of the cart? Um, and we just put a, boom, right there, right? We just put a, uh, a motion detector, okay, at the front where it's XO, right? XO, we put a motion detector there. Uh, and this motion detector will determine the velocity. Okay. And so in your steps, you need to be able to write out the procedures so that a student can recreate your procedures and to get data, numerical data for all of the variables in order to solve for A. Okay. You're not telling them how to solve for A, you're just telling them how to get the data so that they can solve for A. All right. So let's do one more. Um, let's do, um, uh, yeah, let's do momentum stuff. Okay. So momentum and impulse okay so momentum and impulse so 
uh, I'm gonna go a little bit extra here. I'm gonna uh, help us with the um, the graphical part as well. So let's do let's do impulse here. So we know that impulse is force times the change in time, which is equal to the change in momentum. And change in momentum is mass times the change in velocity. All right. So let's do something relatively simple here. So here we have this R equation. Um, and the problem states that we need to create a graph to help determine the impulse. All right. So now, now we're going to think, OK, graph. Uh, what am I going to graph, right? And so if you remember, within the equation is the tips on how to find different things for a graph. So if we have two variables that are being multiplied, force times time, right? The area under the curve, all this is your impulse, okay? And so this is a, this is a giant clue. This giant clue tells us that we need to determine the force and then we need to determine the time. All right. Um, now we can do it that way, or we can be like, oh, well, here's another thing that we can do. We can do mass times the change in velocity, right? Because like, we can use these for for equipment because m times delta v is equal to f times t, right? That the two are the same. And so for like equipment, it might not be a mass times velocity graph, but we can always do force times time for the impulse for equipment, right? We can have uh, if we're having uh, a object that gets impacted by force, right? So we have I don't know. Um, let's say we have a cart, okay, and then this is like a rough surface, right? This is a rough surface, okay. Um, and uh, the the prompt is how much impulse, okay, is given to the cart during the rough surface okay so we want to know how much impulse is given to the the cart during this rough surface part okay so there's there's a couple of things that we can gather um, so maybe instead of saying impulse uh, because for impulse is mass times the change of velocity uh, there's different things we can do so we need to really expand our imagination here uh, we can determine um, using a speedometer right or a motion detector so we can see uh, a photo gate here. So if we do a photo gate here versus a photo gate here, right? This can tell us V initial and this can tell us V final as this cart is moving through the photo gate. Okay, and that's where this comes in. Remember, so the, the idea is if my variable is V, what are my tools? We can do either a motion detector or a photo gate, right? Or a photo gate. And I just chose a photo gate. You can also cho choose a motion detector, but it makes sense for me to use a photo gate here. Okay. Um, and so that's uh, delta V. Okay. How are we going to find the mass? Well, uh, we can use a scale, right? We can put this cart on top of a, a scale, and this scale will, will tell us what the mass is. Okay. So we got that. All right. We have M and we have V. So if I have that, that'll tell me my, my impulse. Right, and the question goes even further. Right, the question can be like, how much force? What is the force of friction during this rough surface? Okay, all right. So now we can, you know, hone this down even more. If they're like, oh, what is the force of friction? The only other variable that you need to find is time. So what you have to do is you just have to, you know, on top of the mass, on top of the velocity, you have to measure the time. How much time did it take uh, for this object to cross this rough surface? Right, and so for that, what do you need? I need a timer, AKA a stop watch, All right? And so you would write your procedure. Um, you would tell whoever's reading it, you know, uh, you would have two photo gates here to determine your initial and your final velocity, boom. You would put the, the object on top of a scale to determine the mass, boom, right? In order to determine the force, you need to determine uh, the elapsed time, boom. When it's going through the rough surface, boom, boom, right? And then you would just have like students time, you know, when it when it goes through the photo gate and when it leaves the photo gate, boom, 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 you have delta T, boom. You have everything that you need in order to find F. So when I say really use these equations to help you determine your procedures, I'm not lying. I'm not joking here. This is the clearest, cuttest way. So the hardest part is to actually get all this information and just put it in a logical step, uh, you know, kind of way. All right, so that was me. Um, the best way to go about this is to just really get some practice in, and that's what we will be doing. Uh, I will see you. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.